ladies and gentlemen, the search for mass limit and meta properties on the way to limit has always been attractive. The atomic structure as known is based on two substances. First is positively charged nucleus of enormous density consisting from 200 or 300 nucleons held by short range nuclear forces, strong interaction, and negatively charged electrons in space with a matter density approximately 25 orders of the magnitude lower than nucleus, held by long-range electrical attraction, electromagnetic interaction. Both substances have as their limit. Let's consider them separately. Atomic nucleus, it is known that the first attempt to describe the atomic nucleus was undertaken by George Gamow in 1928. He suggested that nuclear matter is like an electrically charged liquid, and the nucleus itself has a well-defined spherical shape like a drop of the water. This was the first theoretical model of atomic nucleus. Based on this model, Boron the Wheeler in 1939 then created the theory of nuclear fission. Heavy nucleus is protected from the fission in two parts by potential barrier, fission barrier. For uranium, this barrier is approximately 6 MeV. The charge of the nucleus increases, the barrier height is decreases. When barrier wash out completely, a nucleus becomes be totally unstable against spontaneous fission. It takes only 10 to the minus 19 seconds. A solid line on this picture I show cal calculated nuclear masses based on liquid drop model. A dot is experimental one. If you look at precisely, I mean, the difference between experimental and calculated values, you may see such a difference under the regular, in some cases, a definite number of protons and neutrons, you have a more bound system. This bound system called like uh, shells. Today is known 300 nucleus. Some of this, they bound, more bound than predicted from liquid drop model. When we have a uh, two times magic nucleus for neutrons and the protons, they're double magic. And among 3,000, only nine double magic nucleus is known. It is sodium, oxygen, calcium, nickel, and tin, and lead. Habeas is lead, which consists from 82 protons and 126 neutrons. And now let us consider the nucleus heavier than lead. What about spontaneous fusion? And how this fusion looks like if the shell effect may exist, may come for the very heavy system. The first of all, it become to be possible after discovery of connection between collective motion and particle motion in atomic nucleus and development of theory of structure of atomic nucleus based on this connection. This was made by Bohr, Rainwater, and Mottelson, and the interpretation now is liquid drop and some correction which show the nuclear structure. As any theory, it is uh, it may be it, it have a predictive power and for the prediction uh, the system more heavy than lead, more heavy maybe than uranium, and that was made in 1966 by Subyshevsky, Gareev, and Kalinkin. And you see there's such a deviation which show existence and the presence of new shells with atomic number 108, a neutron 162, which is deformed nucleus, and atomic number 114, and neutron number 186, 
1884, which is spherical nucleus. For the left graph, show how change in the potential energy of nucleus when we take into account the Hill correction. Instead of bell type of barrier we shown for uranium, which predicted for uranium by a liquid drop model, you see now, taking into account the correction, double hamp barrier, which explain the isomerism in spontaneous fusion. More interesting case is in the space where barrier, the liquid barrier wash out upper graph, but taking into account shell correction, you see that the sum of liquid drop and shell energy makes a barrier now. And this barrier is very, quite high, six, maybe eight MeV, and the height of the barrier depends on the shell effect. The appearance shell, the appearance barrier in the heavy nucleus jump up the stability of in the space where this correction at the maximum. You see, instead of uh, exponential decrease of the outline, you know, we may expect, I mean, very enhanced and very stable system with atomic number 112, 114, and 116. So actually, it completely changed uh, idea about material world, which is uh, consistent from mainland, which is continent, stable nucleus, peninsula created by uranium, thorium, and transuranium element, and previously, a limit of nuclear existence was element number 100, but now, instead of that, we have uh, some islands, the small shell, with Atomic number 118, uh, one, one, 108, and the big island of stability with atomic number 114. This was end of 1960s. At that time in literature, we find such very exotic uh, pictures like uh, our world, left side, existing transuranium element like a curium, californium, fermium, prediction for element 104, 110, in the right side, half-life against spontaneous fusion for very heavy system, which we call super heavy. Sometimes the element uh, 114, who is atomic, who is a neutron number 184, may have half-life bigger than the age of the Earth. Nevertheless, I will show you later that maybe it's not so exotic, really. I mean, we not come yet to the top of the island, but you see, when the neutron number increases, a half life increases very fast, and I will tell you, talk about that later. The question is, uh, how to produce such a system? And let me show you and this picture, which I show many times in my lectures, when uh, left side, again, I mean, lead, continent, peninsula, consisted thorium, uranium, and transuranium element, and predicted island of the stability far from the old region. We have sealed to the island. We have found a ship or nuclear reactor, which allow us, I mean, to reach, unfortunately, all known ships, like a neutron capture reaction, like a light ion induced reaction, like cold fusion heavy ion induced reaction, which used before, may not give us possibility to make a such voyage to the island. So you need more neutrons, and that is the principal limitation to produce a very heavy, heavy elements. Only one way is just to have a neutron excess in nuclear reaction, in colliding nucleus, and for that case, we need use not stable island, not stable uh, target material, 
we have to have an artificial material produced with high flux reactor by neutron capture in this respect, neutron rich. And for the projectile to have a calcium. Actually, the reaction is like from the accelerator, calcium 48, plutonium target from high flux reactor. And we come together on collision, they fuse, and at that moment, we have a common system with some of the masses of target and projectile. That is a new element, new nucleus, but very excited. It cooled down by neutron emission. And finally, we have the same nucleus in principle in the ground state. Due to the recoil energy, it moves in the forward direction and come into the mass separator. When uh, detectors show that heavy nucleus came and stuck in the frontal detector, and first alpha was emitted, a beam was switched out, and immediately we saw all decay of the heavy nucleus, start from mother nucleus, and daughter nucleus, and granddaughter nucleus, and you see like five, six generations. So actually, in experiment, we saw the family, the radiative family, which arise from uh, evaporation residues. For each nucleus in this family, I was measured energy of alpha decay and the half-life. And this is which was obtained during the 15 years for even that isotopes you saw here, new new isotopes of the new element, like fluorovium 114, 116, livermorium, and even 118. So actually, that even one, two, three, four, five families, neutron rich, come from this island of the stability. Uh, if you look at a prediction of the theory about the alpha decay, about the properties, alpha decay, or this decay properties of this nucleus, as shown here by black dots, the experiment is quite close uh, to prediction. The difference is only 5%. So in this respect, it is first evidence that really such heavy system form and decay as was predicted by macro microscopic theory. Same for the spontaneous fusion. And the left side is known region for mm, transuranium elements, californium, fermium, uh, novellium. For the right side, it's a new data obtained in calcium-48 induced reaction. You saw that half-life is increases eight orders of the magnitude at the velocity of 162 neutrons and 108 protons, then dropped out and gain, and then increases again, as was really predicted by theory. A minimum half-life, so minimum stability of the heavy nucleus just between two shells. Then <laughs> the old isotope was produced using the neptunium and barium and berkelium target, with calcium 48 again, one, two, three, four, five families now for that old isotope. So actually, um, before this experiment, we have only the, like a heaviest nucleus isotope produced in cold fusion, cold fusion when the target was lit and vessel and projectile was massive ions. Now, come 55 new neutron rich isotopes of the heaviest element, synthesized now with calcium 48 reaction. All of them, all, all, all of them is uh, islanders. A little bit, let me talk about the reaction mechanism. So actually, the cold fusion 
when the target is left and we just increase the projectile and we go for the more and more and more heavy elements. You see this cross section is exponentially decreases. When for the hard fusion reaction, when we have a calcium 48, again we have a such decrease until uh, 110, 112, and then it dries because it just approached to the island of stability. This is a really direct evidence that he is, nucleus become the most stable. Indeed, a theory calculated barrier height of this nucleus are shown here, and you see that uh, this cross-section is strictly follow, I mean, the increase barrier at the island of the stability. Let me uh, say that uh, approximately 60 years when we start from Nobelium and move to the more heavy nucleus, we came from the mass number 254 to 294. We produce the heaviest nucleus today has a mass number 294. It was produced two times. One time, it's like an even, even nucleus, like isotope of element 118, which has 0.7 millisecond. Other way was isotope element 117, which has a half-life 50 millisecond. Both values, enormous, long, for microcosmos. And from this, we can conclude that we not come to the border of the stability for the nucleus. A nucleus with atomic number more than 120 may exist and with mass number more than 30. So actually, short summary is that we see it more than 40% larger than of lead, the heaviest stable element, we see an impressive extension of nuclear survival. Also, super heavy nucleus are in the limit of Coulomb stability, shell stabilization, low ground state energy, create efficient barrier, and they have enabled super heavy nucleus to exist. In this respect, the fundamentals of the modern theory concerning the mass limit of the nuclear matter have obtained experimental verification. This is a, a big, uh, I would say, giant periodic table made at Dubna on the wall of the swimming pool at the Volga River. You see here, super heavy elements are shown by yellow frame and the dot product in the alpha decay of these elements which really fulfill entire eight a row, uh, seven zero of uh, periodic table. This is critical field with really formal limit of element existence. Limited charge, uh, critical charge is 173, as was calculated recently. And the critical charge system become to be unstable against hydrogen type atoms of super heavy elements and uh, positron, but uh, super heavy elements which show here are quite far from this limit. Nevertheless, when charge increases, the velocity of the electron at inner shell increases too, and when it approaches to the velocity of light, relativity, relativistic mass of electrons increases, and that will be take in account in calculation of all the structure of super heavy atoms. Actually, it is very much important because the effect should increase when start from heaviest element known today, 118, up to 173. Nevertheless, the relativistic effect may be studied today 
uh, with known uh, unsynthesized recently super heavy elements with atomic number 112 till 118. Actually, such studies was began in 2007 with element 112, looking for absorption of this element on the gold surface at different temperature. This absorption approach made possible to really look at how it absorbs the radon, how it absorbs the mercury, which we see approximately 140 degrees, and where is the position of the absorption of element 112? That was predicted for 112 by Valeria Pertrana. An experiment which was performed in 2007 was quite close to this prediction. Of course, this kind of experiment could be done not only with element 118, 112, but also for more heavy elements like 113, 114, 115. The advantage for 112 was quite a long half-life. Then half-life should decrease from the second to millisecond. And for that, a new superconducting gas field separator was designed and would be able to make possible really to see all elements until 117, the chemical properties. It is his absorption procedure. Let me come back to element 118 and show you the density, electron density, at different distance from the nucleus. You may see, I mean, the first, second, third, fourth orbit. This calculation was made with non-relativistic approximation. When you switch on the relativism in the calculation, one can see immediately that the compression of the first orbit, and that make some screening of a uh, high charge of the nucleus for the utmost electron, which is impossible for chemical properties. In this case, the interaction with this utmost electron by valent electrons with uh, neighbors could be not negligible and should be taken into account. When you do that, a different kind of two approaches. One of them I will show you here. Then you may come to conclusion that maybe 118 could be not at all the gas. It will be gas only at high temperature, like 180 degrees of the centigrade. The melting point would be expected for the 40 degrees of centigrade. At room temperature, it could be the metal. Moreover, I mean, people mentioned that it will be the semiconductor material melting. To study, I mean, the chemistry and other properties of super heavy elements, new laboratory was built at uh, Dubna in 2017. The laboratory, I mean, improved, uh, equipped by a new accelerator, which may possible now to get a Beam the high intensity from lithium to xenon, including the calcium 48, up to 10 particle microamps instead of 1 microamps, which was used previously for all, I mean, uh, epope cycle of synthesis of super heavy elements. This is a new uh, recall separator, which has a twice efficiency compared to the previous one. We start again a synthesis of element 114 and 115 with a new uh, facilities, I mean, uh, new cyclotron DC280 and new Dubna gas field record separators too. According to the previous uh, level of uh, sensitivity of the experiment, he, I'm sure you, luminosity of the experiment, which was uh, until 2020. Then, when the switch on the new cyclotron, a new separator, it started to increase in mean luminosity. And now it comes approximately 13, 15 times higher than the previous level. And there's still room to come really 
up to, in fact, uh, 25. I mean, all that is to study relativistic effect, chemistry, chemical properties of synthesized elements from 110 to 118 known, and also to come to more heavy elements like 119 and 120. Uh, it is known that it is expected that above of element of 121, uh, some change is expected in periodic system. Uh, there is a different scenario of this change. One is really to lead, uh, lead to the new super actinide series from element 122 until 155. There are other approach, other calculations show that it could be continued, I mean, still the eighth row, 122, 23, and in this case, the periodicity would be washed out very rapidly. There is other scenarios, of course, I have no time really to discuss it, because that to be discussed at the conference of 2022, and I wish you all success in this conference. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.